Well, I'm back, it's time for another video. And in this video, I'm going to explain some of the basics of vacuum degassing silicone for molding and casting applications. Overall, pretty straightforward information, but some of this really helps to see visually some of the why and how of it all. So we're gonna get into that in just a minute here. But first off, just a little bit of housekeeping on the YouTube channel. Just for those curious, my goal is to start uploading a video every Monday. So those of you interested in following our schedule here, uh, you can always check for a new video every Monday right around 1, 2 o'clock-ish central time. I'm mainly focusing just on vacuum degassing silicone in this tutorial, but there's a lot in this that pertains to other processes. So be sure to check the end screen because I'm going to link to several videos that uh, are related to the content that I'm doing here. So be sure to check those out. The end screen will have a link to the master mold that you'll see later on in this video. Now overall, the setup that I'm using here is pretty straightforward. This is a, a fairly minor investment in the grand scheme of things. I think this whole arrangement, this six CFM pump and this chamber cost me about $300 and that was probably about five or six years ago. Um, that said, there are much more elaborate systems that can hold much more material if you're doing larger casting operations. If you're in a production environment where you're vacuum degassing large amounts of silicone, like five to 10 gallons at a time, there are other options, and I will link to those in the video description. But as far as the basic setup that most of us are going to use running a basic workshop for molding and casting, this kind of arrangement you can easily find on eBay stores or even some uh, Amazon sellers will have this basic setup. So to begin, what is vacuum degassing? Well, degassing is the act of subjecting a liquid to a complete vacuum to remove any entrapped air bubbles. Anytime you're going to be hand mixing silicone, you will be introducing air into that mixture. So to remove those air bubbles, the liquid, the uncured silicone, is subjected to a vacuum and that forces the bubbles to rise and break. Now to make good quality silicone molds, vacuum degassing is imperative, especially if you're going to be pressure casting into those molds later on, but more about that later in the video. Now, a basic vacuum setup consists of a vacuum pump, a pot or chamber, and a lid with a gauge and a hose connected to the pump. Now, the lid seals when the air is removed from the pot by way of the gasket that's embedded in the lid. That's that black ring you see there. A well-matched pump and chamber are key to fast degassing, so a large pot with a slow pump is a bad idea. That will require a really long time for a complete vacuum and it will use up valuable working time of the silicone. So real important, the setup here is a six CFM pump. That means six cubic feet per minute can be evacuated with that pump and a two and a half gallon pot or chamber. That means that the pump can easily remove the air from inside that pot in a very short time. This allows fast silicone such as the 5110 or 5130F, either one of those fast formulas can easily be degassed within their seven minute working time. Now, in order to have a vacuum that will actually get the bubbles out of your mix of silicone, you have to be able to achieve 29 inches of mercury. So as about a, as close to a full vacuum as you can achieve on planet Earth with regular benchtop equipment. But you have to be able to achieve that 29 inches of mercury on your gauge and be able to sustain that for a few minutes in order to evacuate the air out of mixed silicone. Anything less than 29 inches will not remove the air bubbles. That's really important because if you aren't pulling a full vacuum, it could sit in there all day, but it's not going to get all the air out. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to be pouring a couple of different molds with 5140 TC 5140 platinum silicone. And 5140 is translucent, so we'll be able to see into the mold and see what's going on when we vacuum degas or we don't vacuum degas. And 5140 is a good general purpose silicone for multiple piece molds where they're going to go and key together and you don't want distortion at that seam. So nice firm silicone, one-to-one -one mix ratio, of course a 40 shore A, 
and it has a 30 to 40 minute working time and 6800 centipoise mixed viscosity. Now the two properties we want to pay attention to here are the 30 to 40 minute working time and that 6800 centipoise mixed viscosity. And here's why those two things matter is depending on how fast we can pull a vacuum on our vacuum chamber that will play into that working time because ideally as I mentioned earlier we want to be able to pull a full vacuum as fast as possible on that mix of silicone and we want to be able to do that well within the working time of our silicone. Now the other thing is that mixed viscosity. This is 6800 centipoise which is relatively low viscosity for a silicone and that's important because that determines the size of the container. So when we're mixing up a low viscosity silicone that means that's not going to expand as much so that plays into the size of the mixing bucket that we'll be using because when we pull a vacuum on a silicone it's going to rise and sometimes more than double its volume. So we want to make sure that we have more than enough room in that mixing vessel to allow the silicone to expand, the bubbles to break, and then collapse again. Now 5140 is kind of an anomaly because typically those 40 Shore A systems are more in the range of 50 to 60,000 centipoise. So very high viscosity silicones. And with those higher viscosity systems, that means we're going to need more room for that to expand. We might have it expand as much as five or six times the original volume. And that's all going to vary depending on the viscosity of that silicone. So real important to remember there, low viscosity silicones don't necessarily mean you don't have to vacuum degas, but it does make them a lot easier to vacuum degas. Now for our mold, we're going to be pouring our silicone into a master mold. This is one I made in a previous video, and you'll notice on the side of it, I have platinum only. That means I only pour platinum silicone into this. Also, I have the amount of silicone it takes to fill it, which is 330 grams. Now, this is a resin pattern or resin master mold, but I'm still going to release this with a little bit of Zip 301 mold release. So we're going to spray a little bit of that on there and set that aside to dry. And now ready to mix up our silicone. So again, this is 5140, and we have a long working time with this. So we have more than enough time to get this properly uh, dispensed and mixed up in our mixing cup. Now, again, that rise of the silicone, that's real important. If you start mixing in a small container, that's not the end of the world. Obviously, we could shift that over to a larger mixing bucket later on, but we want to plan ahead for that, and we want to make sure that we have enough room in our mixing cup to allow for that silicone to expand when it's subjected to a vacuum. So, again, you could always change that over to another uh, mixing cup, but why do that if you can go ahead and plan ahead and go ahead and put that in a mixing cup that's already large enough to accommodate that expansion? So any time we're going to be hand mixing, you are going to be introducing air into your mixture. So that's typically where the air comes from that is later degassed. So unless you're using some real advanced dispensing systems, you're going to be mixing air, especially if you're using a drill or something like that to uh, mix up your silicone components, that will whip air into that mixture. So real important when you're stirring up like this, obviously that is going to be introducing air. And the more vigorous you're stirring, the more turbulence you create, the more need for vacuum degassing. Now, this is after about a minute of mixing, and a minute of mixing is more than adequate if you're doing it properly. So we're now we're going to put that into our vacuum chamber, and then put the lid on, and we're ready to turn on our vacuum pump. And remember that CFM on that pump is real important, that cubic feet per minute. That's the amount of air that that pump can draw out of an enclosed space. So you'll see that needle dropping down pretty fast. So this pump is well matched for this chamber. So on this particular silicone, not that big of a deal because that 30 to 40 minute working time, we have more than enough time to vacuum degas a large quantity of this silicone, even multiple batches if necessary. But if we're working with fast silicone systems like 5110F or 5130F, it's imperative that we have a fast vacuum pump so we can easily pull the air out of the silicone and still have enough working time left over to complete our pour over our pattern. Now what we're watching for is that rise and drop of the silicone. When it rises and looks like it's boiling and then drops down, that indicates that our air is out. We've broken all those bubbles and now we can allow the air back into the chamber 
and pour our silicone. But now we have nice bubble-free silicone. And sometimes you'll still see a few little bubbles floating around on the top, but that's okay. A lot of those dissipate really fast. And sometimes you'll find that you get a, a much greater rise on your silicone in really humid weather. So be aware of that. Sometimes when you're working in a really humid environment, you may need to allow for more room in your vacuum chamber. So here we poured up our vacuum degas silicone into our master mold, which uh, just so you know, that was a TC800 master mold. And now I'm going to take the leftover silicone and pour that into a Dixie cup. And we'll come back to that in just a minute, and that will make a lot more sense here in a little bit. But this is what I typically do with any leftover silicone that I have after a pour like that. Now, I didn't show this part, but I mixed up another batch, and I did not vacuum degas it. So there's really nothing to show there. But this is 5140, not vacuum degassed. So 5140, not degassed, that 6800 centipoise, that does retain those bubbles if we don't make an effort to get them out. So you see those all through that as we're pouring those both in that master mold and over that little mechanical part. And now we're going to let that sit and cure completely. Now 5140, even though it does have a fairly long working time, it still has a pretty fast turnaround time. It has a demold time of about three to four hours at room temperature. So this is about three and a half, four hours later or so. And first thing I do is demold either my mixing bucket or these little plugs. And I use those for storing pointy things. So I use that to store my X-Acto blades and scalpels and stuff like that. And now ready to peel out our two molds. Now this first one, this is the vacuum degas silicone. And now back to my plug. Here's a plug for my plug. Get it? But now we're going to stick those in there. And now we're going to demold the undegas silicone. Now overall, for at a glance, this looks almost identical to the other part. Very similar look to it. Overall, if unless you've got it right in front of you looking at it really close, they look almost identical. Now this one, it's a little bit more obvious that it has a lot of little air bubbles in it. But if you look at this close, you'll see none of those air bubbles are on the surface. So we have usable molds. These are not unusable molds. They're going to function. If we were to pour resin into these, these will work. But if you hold this up to the light, you'll see uh, this is the degas copy. It doesn't have any bubbles in it. That's just the little texture on that tile that I molded. So that's a nice, dense, bubble-free part. But the one that I didn't degas, you can see the little champagne bubbles all through it. Now, here's why that matters. You're probably wondering, can I still use a mold like this? Of course you can. You can easily pour resin into a mold that has not been degassed. You see here I'm pouring some TC800 into the little mechanical part that I molded. And when that sets up, we can easily remove our part and we have a nice accurate part out of that mold, even though it was not vacuum degassed. So you're probably asking yourself, dear viewer, why would I need to vacuum degas my silicone? Well, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Now, on a simple part like this, not that big of a deal. We could probably get away with, uh, especially 5130, it would just about de-air itself. But when we pour a mold without vacuum degassing, we wind up with a lot of those little champagne bubbles or little micro bubbles trapped inside the silicone. And even if those are not touching the surface of our part, they can still affect the casting later on. And here's how. First way is with those little air bubbles in the process of pouring, when those air bubbles are in the silicone and they're rising up in the silicone as it's setting, they can wind up collecting as a group and creating a void in undercut areas. So the parts I did these demos on that are pretty straightforward, simple parts aren't going to attract those. But when we have uh, something with an undercut area that could easily attract those bubbles and you wind up the, those bubbles collecting and you wind up with a bunch of bubbles or a giant void in different spots or overhangs of the part. And that could create a lot of work later on of having to sand that out of the part. Now another problem that can happen if we don't vacuum degas our mold is we wind up those little micro bubbles all through the mold and then we go to cast a resin part under pressure and now we have problems because those little bubbles collapse and allow casting material. So under pressure, a casting material like say water clear 786 
when that mold is subjected to pressure, those little bubbles collapse and then they can break open and allow casting material inside, which creates a bunch of little resin pimples all over the cast part. Now, one final thing that can happen when you don't vacuum degas is getting little bubbles just underneath the surface that aren't necessarily touching the surface, but they're just underneath the surface. And then those bubbles, when it's time to cast, the exotherm of the cast or the heat coming off your resin causes those air bubbles to expand. And what happens is that expansion means that air bubble pushes into the mold. So what you wind up with is little very subtle divots on the surface of your cast. And this kind of defect is really difficult to fix because unlike a little pimple of resin sticking out of the cast, you can't just pick it off or sand it down. You now have to use a filler material to build that back up again to bring it level with the surrounding cast. Now, I don't mean this is a scare tactic to get you to run out and buy a vacuum chamber, but it is very important to know what exactly you're getting out of a good vacuum setup. So why degas? You're going to get better tear strength, longer lasting molds, molds that allow for pressure casting, and of course, greatly reducing air entrapment when you're pouring silicone. But another thing that's really important and is often overlooked is this opens you up to a lot of better silicones with higher physical properties. Now, I'd love to hear some feedback from all of you who have been doing resin casting and silicone mold making for a while and your thoughts on vacuum degassing and some of the your personal tips that you might have. Please feel free to share those in the comments section. And those of you just starting out, if you have questions about this process, please put those in the comments section as well. And as always, in accordance with the prophecy, make sure that you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, click the little bell icon so you get notified when we put out new content. And of course, that will always be on Monday afternoons. And of course, thanks for watching.